This is the Film Geeks Podcast. All of these films, uh, all of these things that we're talking about, all of the trailers have divided the three of us. Let's speak about something which has, which all the, all of us thought was fucking amazing. And for this, we would, we might need some outside help. Let's go talk about Thor Ragnarok. Let me just welcome our guest at this time. This is Mrigang, who is joining us from the Indian Nerve Mansion. How are you doing, Mrigang? Hey guys, what's up? What's happening? And how was your China trip? China was good. Like it was quite surprising in many ways. I never expected China to be pretty much what it was. To be honest, I expected us maybe a better version of India, and uh, I think I got a little bit more than I bargained for. But that's like a story for another day. Let's move on to things that uh, that you are here to talk about. Let's talk about Thor Ragnarok, which is intended to be the sequel to 2011's Thor and 2013's Thor: The Dark World. It is the 17th film of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Can you believe that? 17 films. This film is, of course, directed by Taika Waititi, uh, who is a favorite among all of us, and with the screenplay by Edison and its stars Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Clay Blanchett, Idris Elba, Jeff Goldblum, Tessa Thompson, Carl Urban, Mark Ruffalo, and Anthony Hopkins. From all the accounts I've I've read online and whatever interviews I've seen of the cast members and the people involved in the uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they're saying that this is more of a road film and it's being shot as a film which has which has a little bit of a comedic slant than being a all-out comedy like Taika Waititi is known to make. Uh, the trailer was fucking brilliant. It was the second best trailer which came out this week. I absolutely loved the trailer when it first came out and I love the song selection. You know, they used Led Zeppelin for this. You know, which was beautiful because this uh, the song Led Zeppelin. It actually talks about Vikings and uh, Thor himself. Uh, they used Immigrant Song, of course, and you guys, if you guys haven't heard that song, what have you been doing with your lives? Go and check that out. Let's start very quickly with Mrigang. What did you make of the trailer, Thor Ragnarok? I was blown away. I mean, like, I never expected the trailer to be that amazing, to be honest, because and we have spoken about this before as well. Like, I'm not a huge fan of... Uh, Thor movies, um, Thor 2 was according to me. If I have to ever rank my Marvel films, I don't know where I'm going to rank each of them, but I'm sure that this is going to be the one which is coming up a cropper, you know what I mean? Coming to the trailer itself, when Entertainment, the magazine, they came out with the first uh, images, the set pictures, uh, I found the get up for the people a little goofy, uh, but after seeing the trailer, I think it translates really well. I, I can see what Taka is trying to sort of do with the movie. Uh, that was another thing I had little apprehension for because he has done some amazing movies. You know, Boy was like such a sleep ahead. Same for, you know, Hunt for the Wilder People. But Helmic Thor, that's like a different thing altogether. But I think he's going to do a good job. Uh, coming to the trailer itself, like the number of Easter eggs it throws towards us. I mean, you see Loki, you see Hela. I mean, holy shit. I mean, uh, I wish she was throughout, like, you know, wearing her headgear throughout the movie because it sort of, you know, harkens back to the comics. What do you guys think about it? Peter Griffin family guys, you know what grinds my gears? Seeing the song from the Thor trailer was ripped off from the Wonder Woman theme. Like, how many times have you seen that comment pop up on your feed? It is so irritating. Like, Led Zeppelin's immigrant song was written almost 50 years ago. Come it on, makes dude. No like, sense. No, <laughs> like, know that song. And then also, uh, anyways, like, this was a treat to watch. Uh, we've been hyping this movie in, in, ever since our uh, back in January, where we're uh, saying that this is the movie that you should look forward to. And uh, like Mrigan said, after the picks came in, most of the people were making fun, like, what the hell are they? doing Thor movie suck etc etc but for us who have been waiting for who know uh, what Taika Waititi is capable of uh, we were like super hyped for this and boy did he deliver the set designs especially is what I like geeked out for I'm so glad we see Gak Kirby's designs literally plastered on the walls on one scene and even on the gate that Hulk breaks through they have those uh, signature uh, Jack Kirby designs and for those who don't know who Jack, Jack Kirby is, uh, he was the artist and creator of almost every Marvel superhero movie that you're waiting for. Like if you know Stanley, Stanley was the writer and Jack Kirby was the one who drew all those fantastic pages. 
Also, if this is the tone that they're going for the Marvel cosmic verse, I'm more than up for it. Uh, like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and this look like they're cut from the same cloth. Kate Blanchett uh, like went from being the Lady of the Light, uh, Galadriel from Lord of the Rings, uh. to literally being the Queen of Hell. I think the first Thor comic that I read, Hela was the villain over there. So I'm very excited for this, and this is by far my most anticipated superhero movie of this year. It's been ages, but we finally get to see him get his winged helmet from the comics back although it's like a sci-fi version of the same it doesn't really have wings but it really looked awesome especially like you know with this guy wearing it and um, going back to the trailer itself uh, there are a couple of things which i noticed which sort of look very interesting especially uh, the fact that you know when we guys were talking about ragnarok and it being the destruction of the gods and you know the destruction of asgard um, it does feel like you know loki uh, when he's sitting with the Grand Master and watching the tournament, I have a feeling that it's Loki who wants Thor back to Asgard after the destruction that it has gone through, which we see in the first half of the trailer. And uh, the other fact being, I mean, I'm not very sure how powerful Hela is supposed to be, but one of the biggest things uh, from the trailer, if we take that, is that, you know, she is able to destroy Mjolnir. I mean, she crushes it with her own hands. It's not really my own theory, but I, I was just like, you know, doing some, you know, random searches online. And uh, when I came up against one very interesting fact, and that being like, you know, because the last Infinity Stone has not been discovered yet. Uh, what if, I mean, you know, by some chance, it's one of the ways where they introduce the final Infinity Stone into the Marvel Universe, uh, which is something which is very exciting. I think that is the exact way in which they are going to introduce the soul stone, uh, which, which is the final stone that is left to be introduced in the MCU. And I think that is the, because maybe she possesses it and maybe that's in her headgear. Uh, oh no, she was not wearing a headgear. Okay, I think because she is in possession of the soul stone, she was able to break Mjolnir, which is supposed to be this indestructible thing. So, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah, you're definitely right on that. I think uh, we should be seeing an Infinity Stone turn up into Thor Ragnarok because I think that is the last movie going into Infinity War. So, yeah, I guess yeah. that'll be that'll be it. And also, Doctor Strange is going to be in this movie. Everyone seems to have forgotten that he was yes. featured <laughs> in that post credit sequence. So, it'll be really awesome to see what role uh, Benedict Cumberbatch has to play in this. And since you mentioned the destruction of Asgard, I think we get that scene uh, in which we see that Asgard is blowing up, right? And yep. Thor still has long hair. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you're right on all uh, three accounts, and I think we're going to see all that. But it's just that the tone will shift drastically, I feel, from the first 15 to 30 minutes, which will be very dark, like me, him losing Mjolnir and Asgard, and then uh, that entire buddy cop thing will start. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I think they still have some, you know, things. They are still uh, cards they're hiding up the sleeve. Because uh, when you see the trailer, and uh, there are a few things that look very different, and especially where you have Thor chained and hanging down. And uh, I think uh, it's where there was a fire demon, right? Uh, what's his name now? I think that's Surtur. Surtur, yeah. So, yeah. and... Uh, and he's again like you know an actual Norse god. I have a feeling he's going to be part of this movie too. I mean there have been like you know images which have been leaked from the sets which sort of point towards the same fact but I have a feeling like you know it might not be a big thing it might be just like you know a one-off stop for Thor before he finally makes his way to Sakaar but I mean I'm interested to see if like you know Sardar is actually going to play a big role in the movie or not. For me, like, I really hope that Surtur's role is in capacity to what uh, Dormammu's was, a very small, minor thing. <laughs> I, but, and I probably think that is what they'll go for, because they have established that template, and from what we're seeing, yeah. uh, from, because we've been given very different, different things. The first scene is in which uh, Thor is, like, literally in a very fiery place, so that might just be Surtur, who knows. So I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, though they managed to spoil it, did you notice there wasn't much outrage? Because people, that is like simple, pure and simple trust. Like we know that Marvel won't just like give away literally in the first glimpses that we are getting for this movie. So that, that makes me really hopeful and that is the reason why this is probably our most anticipated movie. I think this, 
trailer in itself was one of the best made trailers to come out this year because uh, I mean I, I personally did not like the Spider-Man one at all and I'm like really excited for the movie but I thought that trailer gave away so much that I was very apprehensive you know like how this trailer was going to turn out to be but it's it's heartening to see this trailer because uh, to be honest this is the year where we actually might find Marvel differentiating itself uh, not like you know really going into the Avengers storyline too much while still like you know f- sort of you know finding places to fit them in because this year we have three um if i may call it the indie marvel movies because we have spider-man homecoming we have um guardians of the galaxy which is not any more indie anymore like you know because you know the first one such as a huge hit and then we have thor ragnarok which are all sort of playing on different s- sort of storylines and which might or might not tie in but it doesn't really matter because I think all of them will be a good joy, right? You're very accurate when you say that this is going to be one of those movies that's uh, Marvel movies that's going to blow all the other movies out of the water. Pending a few, like Abhishek, uh, probably will agree on this one. But uh, I think this is one of the going to be one of those movies that's going to be iconic and it's going to stand out in the whole Marvel universe, uh, I, I, the Marvel extended universe. And this looks fantastic not only because. We all know Taika Waititi for being the fantastic director he is, but also because the set designs like Arundham, you said they look fantastic. Everything about this, the trailer was so kick-ass that it's actually like your uh, shot of upper that you take and it just transports you right there and it goes from zero to hundred in the short amount of time that it does. It just takes you there and keeps you there. It's just like one hell of a ride in the trailer itself. And uh, like Mrigang said, i am not been a fan of Thor movies. I've always been uh, reluctant to watch them in the halls, though, although I have. But uh, these are not movies that I have really greatly enjoyed, like Natalie Portman will also agree with me on this one. I, I think it's great that she's not part of this. At least I hope she's not, because uh, she looked like she was half-assing it throughout the first and the second movie, like it was a big payday for her. But this actually looks like they, they're living true to the comic book series as well as uh, the vision that I, I think is being uh, created for the extended universe. And it all ties up in there. Although one thing that I, I do have sort of will be contrary to everything that I've just said is I've always imagined Ragnarok to be the one war to end it all, right? So I've always imagined it with a more somber tone rather than the tone that we got in the movie. And uh, so it left me a little bit perplexed as to the direction that it is taking because I always imagined it to be quite the contrary. And that is not to say that it will not be a fantastic movie because it just left me a little bit confused because I was expecting a very dark tone movie. And let's see how it uh, ends up. Although, uh, one other thing that I did not like, like Jeff Goldblum, man. Fuck Jeff Goldblum. You you aren't a fan of Jeff Goldblum? Come on, man. I'm not. What is wrong with you? Why don't you you like Jeff Goldblum? What is he ever like? (laughs) The first movie that I saw was The Fly. Yeah, that will do that to you. (laughs) Yeah, it was like, no, no. I don't like this guy. It's like he looks like a frog with his uh, with his big eyes that sort of pop out of his socket. And when he stares at you, it looks so creepy, man. It just doesn't. I, I don't know. That guy doesn't do it for me. He is good as an actor, but he just doesn't do it for me. There are some actors who play themselves, and you wonder why is this guy playing the same role over and over again. And Jeff Goldblum is one of them who defies the stereotype. If you put his character in Jurassic Park and if you just exchange those characters, you won't see any difference. He just didn't give a fuck in that trailer. He was sitting with Loki and Thor said, okay, he's a friend from work. He didn't give a shit at all. And that's why, like, you know, people tend to love that guy. He, he just doesn't give a fuck. He is a of that phrase. Uh, also, since you mentioned Ragnarok to be the end of all wars in Norse mythology, it certainly is that. But in Marvel mythology, I, it might be a spoiler in the third of, I don't know what the script is. I don't know uh, what the story will tend to be. But in Marvel comics, Ragnarok is a clone of Thor. 
So I'm not sure if that is the reason why they've put in Ragnarok. It could uh, always mean to, to be the end of all wars, but like Anish said, it could be uh, they could have gone for a darker tone if they had that. But I think there might be a clone of Thor somewhere in the works, maybe Beta Ray Bill. But I'm still waiting because in Planet Hulk, uh, one of the surprise elements in that book was that uh, they had also captured Silver Surfer. So I'm really hoping that Fox and Marvel made a deal and we see some variation of the Silver Surfer in this. No, I'm glad that you brought up uh, Beta Ray Bill because uh, if you are familiar with the comic books, Beta Ray Bill in fact fights Serta, a variation of which we will see in this film. Serta is obviously the, uh, the Norse mythological character who brings on Ragnarok. So if in case we don't see the character Ragnarok, I hope we see Serta and we, I really hope we see Beta Ray Bill because in the hands of any other director, a guy who, who has the face of a horse will fall flat. But in, in the hands of Taika Waititi, I think we can expect wonders because he has such a great comedic vision. So let's hope for the best. I really hope we get to see my boy Beta Ray Bill in one of the Marvel films. Please ensure that you like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. The link for Facebook page, of course, is in our description. Uh, you can also, as always, find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash Indian Nerve, at Facebook at facebook.com slash Film Geeks Podcast, I am on Twitter at twitter.com slash Indian Nerve, on Instagram at instagram.com slash Indian Nerve, or visit us at www.indiannerve.com slash podcast. If you want to check out our previous episodes, I would like to thank again all your listeners for your time. Please like and share this video and subscribe to this channel. And from all of us here, wherever you're listening to, we hope you're having a great day and may the force be with you always.